So in this session, um, I'll just kind of summarize the mantra for you guys and then see if by me doing that, it brings up any questions you've been having. And we can do a few more questions before we do the sadhana itself. All right. So mantra. <clears throat> So you may be used to seeing uh, these as little postcards or seeing these in tankas or maybe in the sadhana, there's an illustration. This is the Tara Mantra Garland, which is like a visual instruction for how to visualize, but it's flat like an architect's design. It's not three-dimensional on the paper, but we're to visualize it three-dimensionally with the tam standing up in the center and then the om Tare tu tare ture soha around. So like that. Okay, so we're supposed to visualize it three-dimensionally. And here it's confusing because you have the um, syllables moving. The syllables don't actually move. The light moves going out and in and out and in. I just have the syllables moving here so you can see. Um, and so imagine you're kind of in the position of the tom sometimes in the visualization and you're observing the mantra, able to hold all of it, even though it's a 360 degree situation. Imagine you're not using ordinary eyes, you're able to hold all of the syllables at the same time. So Tara's mantra is stationary, but the light rays are moving in and out, performing the two activities, <clears throat> purifying and giving offerings. And then sometimes you'll see the Tara mantra within the Tara mandala. And this is a more elaborate situation with a more layered visualization for advanced practitioners. So when you see that, unless you have the empowerment, <clears throat> really just focus on the center part. All right, so we're to visualize it kind of like this. And basically in all mantras, you're gonna see Om somewhere. Om re represents holy body, speech, and mind. In this context, Om signifies Tara's holy body, holy speech, and holy mind. And the Tare tu Tare Ture contains the essence of the Four Noble Truths. So truth of suffering, truth of origin, truth of cessation, and truth of path. Then we can elaborate a little bit. So the Tare represents liberating us from samsara which means we are liberated from our five contaminated aggregates, the aggregates of form, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness. These aggregates are the basis on which the nominal sense of self, the I, is labeled. Because they are caused by the contaminated seed of karma and delusions, when we encounter desirable and undesirable objects, the different disturbing thoughts, such as attachment and anger, arise then because of that, we again create karma. So Tare is liberating us from that samsara. So we're remembering that samsara is reflected in our outside world, but is not our outside world. Samsara is our five contaminated aggregates bound by karma and disturbing emotions. So we want liberation from that. And then to Tare, the second noble truth, in that it frees us from the true cause of suffering, karma and delusions. Tutari also frees us from the eight fears or dangers. Um, so there are eight fears related to external dangers from elements such as fire and water, and from things such as thieves and dangerous animals. However, the main dangers are not external but internal coming from our delusions, such as ignorance and attachment. So we're remembering that indeed Tara protects us from things like, you know, natural disasters, you know, like the other day driving, um, you know, those of you that were in Portland the other day during the storm, driving was not fun, right? It was not a fun day of driving and it was very slippery and lots of black ice and lots of people that didn't understand how to drive in the winter. I was doing Tara mantras, lots of Tara mantras. <laughs> And that is, you know, of course, I want to be released from all suffering and its causes and become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings. And also, I want to get home safely. Two things, <laughs> right? And when we're praying to Tara, we're saying, basically, may my positive seeds ripen. And this mantra helps my previously created good karma ripen as protection. 
But if I hadn't created the cause myself, there would be no amount of watering would make it happen. Do you understand, right? So it's not like, please save me. It's saying, water my seeds, water my seeds. <laughs> <laughs> right. And when we're so, you know, it protects from natural disasters, natural disasters, but where do natural disasters come from? Karma and disturbing emotions. You know, so we're remembering that everything external in quotes and everything internal in quotes is all coming from the mind, relatively speaking. See the Prasangika view for details. Right. So it's not like a full mind only situation, but close enough when we're walking around to think in those terms. So we're asking for help of, you know, there might be thieves around, there might be robbers around, there might be natural disasters around. Tara, please save me. And also the really the thing we should be afraid of is our negative states of mind. We should have a healthy apprehension of what would happen if we just let our habits of anger continue and our habits of dissatisfaction and attachment and pride and jealousy, if we let them continue, they're not going to just naturally get better. They may in fact get worse. So we should have a healthy apprehension of that. And we're turning to Tara within our own selves, as well as Tara outside of ourselves. And that again, mind to mind collaboration, may my mind be protected from these fears. So the essence of the word mantra, of course, means that which protects the mind. Here we're specifically asking outer and inner protection. May I have it swiftly? Because the special characteristic of Tara being swift. Protection. Okay, so then Ture liberates us from disease and corresponds to the third noble truth, the cessation of suffering. Our fundamental disease is ignorance, not knowing the absolute nature of the I. Relying on Tara, we can realize emptiness easily, see terms and conditions, which frees us from ignorance and keeps us trapped in samsara. So Ture liberates us from disease. And Soha is like Om in that it has a general meaning and then there's a specific meaning to each particular mantra. So the general meaning is, may the blessings of the deity be firmly rooted in us. In this case, in other words, by taking refuge in Tara, reciting her mantra, doing her practice, we receive the blessings of Tara and establish the path of the three capable beings in our hearts. Through this, we can purify all obscurations of our body, speech, and mind and achieve Tara's pure Vajra holy body, holy speech, and holy mind, which are signified by Om. So this summary explanation is, again, from that text, The Power of Mantra by Lama Zopa Rinpoche that I mentioned, which was just put out last year. And it's a really excellent summary of all the main Kriya Tantra deities that we practice in our tradition. So that's the mantra in a nutshell. Um, when you're reciting the mantra in a group, it's nice to do it out loud together, chanted in a group. But when you're by yourself at home, you can do it out loud a little bit and then go into silently under your breath. But it's important that there is um, very, very subtle sound coming out, even if you are the only one that can hear the whisper of it. And in fact, it shouldn't be louder than <laughs> you hearing the whisper of it. Your neighbors should not be able to hear you. But it's the air coming through that helps your subtle energy system as you recite the mantra. So you'd say it out loud a few times and then under your breath. Um, and you want to do it fast enough that you stay alert and perky and not so fast that you give yourself anxiety. Yeah, that speed. So that speed's going to vary person to person. You know, at first you're like, om tare tu tare tu re soha. And then, you know, in two years, you're like, om tare tu tare tu re soha, om tare tu tare tu re soha, right? And then like it starts to just roll off your tongue. Yeah, so your speed is your speed, but have it fast enough that you are alert and perky, right? That you are focused and tuned in. Don't go so slowly that you kind of drift into a hazy la-la land of isn't that a pretty sound. So keep it peppy, but don't go so fast that you make yourself tense or tight. Any questions about the mantra or how to recite the mantra or ideas? or the sadhana in general? Yeah, Alex, go ahead. Thank you, Venerable, um, for these teachings and the practice. Um, you actually just touched on something I had a 
that was around a question I had. So um, I hear that you said that even, you know, just um, not even a whisper, but just saying it, having it on the breath, mm -hmm. that that's really key because it helps us with subtle uh, winds in the subtle body. Mm -hmm. And the question I had earlier was, um, I've often wondered this, that, you know, is reading out loud the sadhana in full or other practices or prayers, is it, is, is there a benefit to reading it out loud, even if it's just a whisper versus in my head? I kind of lean towards reading it silently, but I've been curious about this. So thank you. Yeah, I mean, you, you probably noticed in Tibetan Buddhism, there is a great emphasis on saying everything out loud. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. One reason is just it's easier to memorize things that you've said out loud. The other is that we spend so much of our verbal work with things that are a little bit dodgy that by saying prayers out loud, we're creating positive verbal karma. So positive verbal karma is very useful if you have something important to say, it helps people hear you, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure we've had that experience where there's been something important we've wanted to say. We've said it perfectly, clearly, accurately, with empathy and all the right things, checked all the boxes and people have no interest or just didn't hear us or misunderstood. But we, we did it all right. Why didn't they hear us? You know, and we didn't create the cause. So, you know, saying it out loud creates a lot of power in your speech. Um, certainly there's a, you know, housemate issue, or if you're on an airplane issue, or, you know, issues where you want to keep it a little bit more low key and just under your breath. Um, and there's also an argument for sometimes in retreat to do things silently, but as if reading, you know, not skipping parts, but as if reading in your mind and doing mental recitation of the mantra when you're trying to do things like develop calm abiding and special insight. There is mental recitation of even the mantra, but it's kind of like know what you're doing and why you're doing it because there's an argument for either, but don't do it just out of I don't feel like it today or I do feel like it today, like give yourself a good reason <laughs> yeah so thank you. Um, yeah yeah that's very helpful thank you so much yeah and, and i mean sometimes when we're feeling a little low energy it's work to say it out loud also so you don't want to force it if you're having kind of a low energy day yeah yeah other thoughts yeah eleanor Just a question. Um, sometimes in a situation um, that you need something in a big hurry, you know, like, um, is it appropriate to visualize yourself as Aritari and the emptiness and just being there in a second, you know, like just as a protection or just as a, yeah, so we stay on the path, so we don't say things that maybe. You, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, because you have the empowerment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what you can think in a moment, you know, you're not even on a cushion, you're just living your life and there's like a difficult conversation happening or there's a difficult sort of event happening is you just think out of emptiness because of bodhicitta, I arise as Tara. Om Tare Tu Tare Tari Soha, Om Tare Tu Tare Tari Soha. Yeah, and that is a very excellent, quick motivation. Out of emptiness, I arise as Tara because of bodhicitta. Yeah, yeah, and and mantra or not, depending, it might be that you're just kind of holding awareness of yourself as the deity if you have the empowerment, which you do. Yeah, um, if you don't have the empowerment and you still want to use that, you can imagine her. She appears in a moment above the crown of your head or she appears in a moment in the space in front. Because remember, she's already there. It's your visualizing of her becomes like a reception, you know, it becomes like a gateway. So you're not saying, please come, she's already here. So you visualize her, the connection is felt more deeply. And you as the deity is something that is growing and being nurtured all the time. And if you're thinking in order to protect myself and others, I arise as the deity, that's fine, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it really can help in those stressful moments. Um, you know, when I uh, 
when I was a very new nun um, and I hadn't taken my full ordination yet, I had to work a little bit sometimes. And I had to work with a bunch of uh, sweet but silly boys um, who were quite young. And they would play like ACDC on the radio. Yeah, you remember ACDC, right? <laughs> at like full volume at three in the morning, we were bakers, right? So I come into the bakery to start rolling out my croissants and there's ACDC just blasting, <laughs> right? And then maybe a little Metallica. And like, there was a time in my life where I would have been fond of such things, but I was kind of in a quiet contemplative nunly mood, just wanting to roll out dough. And I knew that I could either be amused and enjoy it and connect with them, or I could be grumpy and feel put upon and like they were being disrespectful. And I had a choice every morning what to feel, that sometimes the only way I could go into that workplace environment is when I parked the car to just take a minute and think of Tara. Yeah, mm -hmm. just kind of connect for a moment and then, you know, get out of the car, go to work. Yeah, that really can help. So uh, I, I recommend a, a parked car meditation. <laughs> before and after events <laughs> right. yeah yeah other other questions uh, yeah Rebecca go ahead this might be a dumb question um how do I know if I had the empowerment I had Jado Rinpoche's Lectima I did His Holiness's 21 Terras and I think I did Lama Zopa's uh Green Terra Mantra but I don't know if I've had the actual, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's it's often given as a Jainong, a subsequent permission, which means if you've already taken an empowerment, then that gives you the blessing to see yourself as the deity. If you've never taken a great empowerment, it's a blessing, it's a connection, it's powerful, it's wonderful, but you don't yet have permission to see yourself as the deity unless you've taken a great empowerment at first. So how do you know if it's a great empowerment? <laughs> Really goes over a couple of days. It's um, one where it's it, you're given like kusha grass and like protection cords and very you know there's a lot more smells and bells. You sleep on it and then the next morning the lama says you know examine your dreams la 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 and then the empowerment happens and there's a very obvious taking of bodhisattva vows and things. Although in Jainong so you take bodhisattva vows as well, but the main uh, lower tantra great empowerment that's given in our tradition is great chenrezig thousand arm chenrezig and great medicine buddha those are the two most common lower tantra full empowerments that are given and then otherwise it's highest yoga tantra so probably we have a lot of miscellaneous jainong holders in the group who may or may not have had an actual full empowerment first um, and that's okay you have the blessing and the connection um, and someday you can have a full empowerment when things come together or you go hunt for them. Okay. And does that have to be in person or can it be in online? It depends on the Lama. Um, with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, it's fine to do it live online. And His okay. Holiness does give full empowerments live online. And uh, yeah, you can just kind of be on to that. Um, his YouTube channel is called Dalai Lama Archive. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah, other questions? Are there areas of interest or resistance? Oh, Rocio. Just to, yeah. yeah, just to clarify. So you're saying that if we have not taken those higher uh, empowerments the, with the Dalai Lama website on the archives, we can take them if we like the vote some days for that? Yep. Oh, how fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. He's been, especially during the pandemic, he's been so um, generous with those. It's been amazing. Yeah, even highest yoga tantra he's offered a couple times live online. Um, but yeah, it's Lama by Lama. I think Garchan Rinpoche also offers empowerments live online, and that's okay. Oh. Um, so there's a couple, but you know, the same rules apply as with any empowerment. It's not enough to just feel a connection to the deity. You have to feel a connection with the Lama who's giving the empowerment of the deity, you know? Um, so sometimes we do it the other way around. Just who's giving Tara? It's like, well, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Make sure you know them and like them. You know that, Rocio, but others may not know that. Um, yes, do your sussing out first. And, um, you know, it's poignant and it's tragic and it's a sign of the degenerate era, but it's not enough to just trust the organizations that are hosting the Lama to have done proper vetting. 
sometimes they're just going by they have a name a big name or a reputation and they may or may not know the backstory or the behavior of the llama so you still need to do your own checking and you know they say historically you would check 12 years right um please check more than 12 hours <laughs> okay right if you're not going to wait the full 12 years make sure you've had at least 12 hours of teachings with this person and make sure you actually sort of know them know what you're getting into feel like you can see them as a representative and as a gateway to the divine this is a more significant relationship than marriage it's it's important to remember that yeah tantra gurus are a big deal lots of really valid tantra gurus out there but also many charlatans yeah yeah um yeah other questions and of course you can keep doing Tara forever, you know, without the empowerment in the way we've been doing it here. Yeah, Marco, go ahead. Hi, Venerable, uh, just a question. Uh, if um, any empowerment from uh, his colonies uh, should be online or can be from a recorded uh, teaching? I think in the case of His Holiness even recorded, long as you do everything, you do all the steps, you don't miss anything, it's okay. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. You. Yep. No skipping steps. <laughs> Not like fast forwarding through boring parts or something. You have to do the whole thing. But yeah, if you do the whole thing in the case of His Holiness, it's okay. Yeah. And, you know, there's lots of substances that go around during an empowerment and online, obviously, you can't take those substances. So anytime you see His Holiness have something and like give it to his attendant to pass around, visualize that you're taking it, really think that you're taking it. And, um, don't kind of go into kind of a spacey blissed out place of yeah I'm in an empowerment like stay tracking with the steps if you can as best as you can yeah and of course empowerments are a little bit confusing sometimes and so if you're not sure what's going on just keep thinking I agree I accept <laughs> and that helps plant it on your mental continuum I agree I accept. I'm not sure what that was. I agree. I accept. And of course you do because you already wanted the empowerment and you already love the Lama. So if there's fine details that are unclear to you, it's not like they're going to ask you to suddenly like sacrifice animals or something bizarre. You know, it's not going to be anything dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other, other questions or uh, ideas, resistance, whatevs? Hello, Venerable Yontan. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to be with you finally. Um, a quick one, really, and this goes over all of my practices. Um, sometimes I breathe in and say the mantra, mainly in my Chan Rezeg practice. Mm. Does it? Does that matter? Does it still count as a mala or mm. is it just complete laziness? No, I think, you know, if you're like, oh, money, pay me, oh, money, pay me, money, pay me, money, pay me, money, like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. For your mantra count, if you have a um, a commitment to do your, you know, 10 malas a day or whatever, I think you can still count them. Um, yeah. It, I think in a mantra accumulation in a retreat, you're trying to do kind of more perfect. So, you know, the ones on the out breath. And then, of course, if you like sneeze or burp or something, you know, you go back a few, <laughs> you know, there's all this when you're doing an accumulation retreat. Um, but that's a different situation. I think for your daily practice, you can be more relaxed about it. Yeah. So all, the ones on the in and the ones on the out, I think it's okay. That That's just my opinion. <laughs> so you see your llama for details, but it seems okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, one in the chat. Let's see. Do you have it, Alex? I don't see it. Yeah. Sorry, it's going to send it to you. Um, not the quickest typer. Um, but somebody did ask, any tips on how to overcome the doubt that Buddhas are actually here in front of me? Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of angles. Um, for me, I, I think about like, what is something palpable that I can touch myself? And something palpable I can touch myself is me, myself, an ordinary person, full of afflictions, full of chaos. I really do want the best for sentient beings. And then I get distracted and I forget and I have afflictions and stuff, but like my heart of hearts, I want the best for sentient beings. And that's me, ordinary person. So imagine if I had cleared 
all of the distracting factors from my mind. And I developed all of the positive states in my mind. All I would want all the time, all day, every day would be the welfare of all sentient beings. So it's kind of like you have trust in your own good heart and then you picture what it would be like fully developed and think, right, the Buddhas are like that. The Buddhas are like that. They're like me, only fully developed without all the mess and chaos and distraction. So why wouldn't they be here all the time? That's one. You know, another is to think of those moments of like awe and wonder and deep connection that you've had maybe in a teaching or during prayers or in nature or with a good, good friend where something touched you deeply enough that there was a shift. You got something more deeply than normally. You know, that had the ring of truth, the penny dropped. And those moments of sort of like mild to moderate transcendence that we experience on a good day can remind us that the divine is present and trying to get to our heart and help it out. You know, so there's that. You know, there's also just reading and studying about Buddha nature itself and studying about Buddha nature sounds dry and scholarly, but actually reading about Buddha nature and the mechanisms of development can give you faith that such a thing is possible because there's a logic to it. You're not just living in hope. I hope that that's the case. You say, oh, right, the mind develops in this way. And some of those stages, I feel like I've already touched somehow in some infant form or could imagine the way that would be. So studying Buddha nature, the Tathagatagarbha, the Buddha potential of all sentient beings is really a study of the mind and its development, which can give you trust that there are people who have developed their minds. So, you know, whatever angle is going to work for you, whether it's scholarly and logical, whether it's poetic and experiential, you know, kind of think around where do I get stuck and then investigate the resources that help you unstuck and ask for those resources. Because sometimes it's like a logical issue. You have like a, a log jam of that doesn't make sense. Sometimes it makes perfect sense, but you don't feel it. And there's something about not being re receptive or responsive that's the issue. So just kind of like peel back some layers of the question and hear where your resistance is. Yeah. So never talk over the top of your questions. Really hold the question and keep coming back to the question gently whenever you've got new information and see how the question feels. Because they're often that real gateway to a change. Okay, we'll do the practice one more time, and this time we'll do the praises in English. And I'll try to do them at a gentle speed. <laughs> um, I, uh, I thought to just briefly show you the visualization for the 21 Taras. Um, so normally, um, see, there's a few different versions of the image, but um, the simple way in the second paragraph is to visualize the 21 Taras as you recite the praises to visualize green Tara in the center with the 21 Taras surrounding her clockwise on a 21 petaled lotus, each on a petal and moon disc. One tradition says that as you recite the praise to each Tara, you imagine that Tara sending out an emanation that absorbs into you, giving you that quality. So basically main Tara, and then it starts down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like in a, in a spiral like that. Yeah. And the colors basically relate to peace, increase, power, and wrath. Um, the simple visualization, you can think each Tara looks the same except for her color, that she has one face, two arms. In the palm of her right hand is a flask that accomplishes the activity of that Tara, while in her left hand is an Utpala flower. There are variations where there's a particular implement in each lotus indicating the qualities of that Tara. That's accurate too, but this is kind of the simplest and easiest visualization. And if you find it too difficult to imagine each Tara absorbing into you, you can just imagine the principal Tara sitting in the center of the lotus and moon disk and as you say the praises with your hands in the prostration mudra, you imagine purifying beings coming from the principal Tara's heart, entering your heart. Then at the end, imagine that a replica of Tara absorbs into your heart, 
your body, speech, and mind become one with Tara's holy body, holy speech, and holy mind. So if that one's too much, just do simple. So <clears throat> back to posture. And just a few deep intentional breaths settling. And zero in on just the breath, letting surface distractions settle. Above the crown of my head, I visualize a lotus and moon disk. Upon these is the great treasury of compassion, Aryatara, mother of all enlightened beings, who is oneness with my kind root guru. My guru is seated in the full lotus position within a transparent bubble of rainbow colored light, is pink in complexion, and wears saffron robes and a pendant's hat. His right hand is at his heart in the gesture of teaching the Dharma and holds a vajra and stem of a white lotus that blooms beside his right ear. His left hand rests on his hip. It holds a bell and stem of another white lotus that blooms beside his left ear. Stabilizing that. At my guru's heart is Aryatara in female aspect, green in color and seated in the dancing posture within a rainbow bubble. Her left leg is bent up, her right leg is outstretched. Her left hand is at her heart in the mudra symbolizing the triple gem and holding the stem of a blue tapali flower. Her right hand extended over her right knee is in the mudra of granting sublime realizations. She is beautifully adorned with jeweled ornaments and scarves, and at her three places bears the syllables Om Ah Hum. At her heart is a lotus and moon seat, on which stands a radiant green syllable Tam. Rays of green light radiate in all directions from the Tam and invoke all the enlightened beings of the Ten Directions. They are all absorbed into Aryatara and become one. Please remain above my head until I receive enlightenment.
I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merit from giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merit from giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merit from giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. With my body, speech, and mind, I devoutly prostrate. I offer all offerings, both real and imagined. All sins and offenses amassed from beginningless time I confess. I rejoice in all virtuous actions of holy and ordinary beings. O gurus and Buddhas, please remain until samsara ends and turn the wheel of dharma for sentient beings. All my virtues and those of all others I dedicate to the great enlightenment. This ground anointed with perfumes strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this is a Buddha field and offer it. May all living beings enjoy this pure land. The objects of my attachment, aversion, and ignorance, friends, enemies, and strangers, and my body, wealth, and enjoyments. Without any sense of loss, I offer this collection. Please accept it with pleasure and bless me with freedom from the three poisons. Yadam Guru Ratna Mandala Kamni Please bless me to purify all obscurations of my body so that it will become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra body. White light emanates from the Om at Aryatara's brow, curves in an arc to enter my brow. My body is purified completely of all obscurations and becomes one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra body. And as you think these thoughts and do this visualization, if it feels comfortable, you can also add the mantra. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha 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 Om Tare Tu Tare Ture Soha. Please bless me to purify all obscurations of my speech so that it will become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra speech. Red light emanates from the awe at Arya Tara's throat and curves in an arc to enter my throat. My speech is purified completely of all obscurations and becomes one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra speech. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha 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 
Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re So Ha 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 Om Tari Tu Tari Tari Soha. Please bless me to purify all obscurations of my mind so that it will become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra mind. Blue light emanates from the whom at Aryatara's heart and curves in an arc to enter my heart. My mind is purified of all obscurations and becomes one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra mind. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re So Ha 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 Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re So Please bless me to purify all delusions and subtle obscurations to omniscience, so that my body, speech, and mind will become one with Guru Tara's holy body, speech, and mind. Three colored beams emanate simultaneously from the Om, Ah, and Hum syllables, curving in an arc and entering my three places completely purifying all my delusions and subtle obscurations to omniscience. My body, speech, and mind become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy body, holy speech, and holy mind. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re So Ha 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 Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re So Om Tari Tu Tari Tari Soa.
my root guru, dissolves into Aryatara, who melts into green light, which flows into me. Instantly, my wrong conception that I and all other phenomena are self-existent, together with my dualistic mind and its views, disappear, becoming completely empty. Not even a trace of them remains. I concentrate one pointedly in this empty state, with the wisdom that is indistinguishably one with Guru Tara's blissful omniscient mind. Then, out of emptiness, wisdom manifests instantly as Arya Tara's holy body, seated upon a lotus and moon cushion. At the heart is another lotus and moon, upon which in the center stands the syllable Tam, surrounded in a clockwise direction by the syllables of the mantra, Om Tare Tu Tare Turi Soha. The Tam and the Mantra are manifestations of Guru Tara's holy mind, with which my mind is totally unified. Green light radiates from all the letters, spreading out in every direction It purifies the negative karmas, gross delusions, and subtle obscurations to omniscience of all sentient beings who become Tara. Again, light radiates, bearing manifold offerings to the six transcendental senses of all the Buddhas and sentient beings who have become Tara. The enlightened beings are extremely pleased and shower down the superlative qualities of Buddha Tara's holy body, holy speech, and holy mind, omniscient wisdom, supreme power, and infinite compassion in the form of a great shower of light rays. As I recite the mantra, I absorb and am blessed by this rain. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha 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 And then Tara emanates the 21 Taras. ones to support peace, pacifying, settling, soothing in white. Ones for increase, abundance, strength, support, resources in yellow. Ones for power, magnetizing strength, 
in red. And ones for Roth, completely free from anger, intimidating negative states of mind, with perfect compassion in blue black. And we offer praises. Homage to our swift heroic, guys like lightning instantaneous, sprung from opening stamens of the Lord of Three Worlds, sheer born lotus. Homage, she whose face combines a hundred ornaments at fullest, blazing with light rays resplendent as a thousand star collection. Homage, golden blue on lotus, water born and had adorned, giving ever calm austerities, patience, meditation, her sphere. Homage, crown of Tata goddess, actions triumph without limit. Relied on by conquer's children, having reached every perfection. Homage filling with Tutare, whom desire direction and space. Trampling with her feet the seven worlds, able to draw forth all beings. Homage worshipped by the all lords, Chakra, Hagni, Brahma, Maru. Honored by the host of spirits, corpse raises Gandava's Yakshas. Homage with her tray and pay sounds, destroying those magic diagrams, her feet pressing left out right in, blazing in a raging fire blaze. Homage to a very dreadful destroyer of Mara's champions, she with frowning lotus visage, who is slayer of all enemies. Homage she had her heart, her fingers, adorn her with regal mudra. Light ray masses all excited, all directions wheels adorn her. Homage she so joyous, radiant, crown on knitting garlands of light, wherefore laughing with Tutare, subjugating Mara's devas. Homage she able to summon all earth guardians assembly, shaking, frowning with the whom sign, saving from every misfortune. Homage crown adorned with crescent. Moon on ornaments most shining, Amitabha in her hand, not sending out much light eternal. Homage she mid breath a blaze like eon ending fire abiding. Rush at left bent joy surrounds you, troops of enemies destroying. Homage she who strikes the ground with her palm, then with her foot beats it, scouting with the letter whom the Seven levels she does conquer, homage, happy, virtuous, peaceful, she whose field is peace, nirvana, she endowed with thom and soha, destroyer of the great evil, homage she with joy surrounded, tearing both bodies asunder, praise with whom a knowledge mantra, arrangement of the ten letters, homage to re with seed letter, of the shape of syllable, whom by foot stamping shakes the three worlds, Mero, Mandara, and Vindhya, homage holding in her hand the hammock moon of Deva Lake form, with twice spoken Tara and Pei, totally dispelling poison, homage she who gods and their kings, and the kin arose to honor. Armored in a joyful splendor, she dispels bad dreams and conflicts. Homage she whose two eyes bright with radiance of sun and full moon. With twice Hara and Tutare, she dispels a veer contagion. Homage full of liberating, pal by the set of three natures. Destroys hosts of spirits, yakshas, and praise corpses supreme to ray. These praises with the root mantra and prostrations thus are twenty one. And think that the twenty one Taras dissolve into the central Tara, who dissolves into light and absorbs into you, blessing your body, speech, and mind.
and we dedicate. May I quickly become Guru Aryatara Padma Droma and lead each and every sentient being into her enlightened state because of these merits. May the supreme jewel Bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. Jantu semcho rimpoche, ma ke panam ke guchi, ke pan yam pa me pa yang, gone gondu kawashu. Uncapsula che kung ki chin la, ki gendun tenzin ku te ta ten chin. Zaytri cho do kuntu kyamba, da da so dro we so su ta min cho. Okay, thanks very much, everyone. Happy practicing. And um, that Dropbox link is in the chat somewhere. You can just click it and it'll open up in your browser. Also, all of those practices um, in various forms can be found on my YouTube channel just for free whenever. So you're very welcome to check those out if you like. Um, and I think Alex wanted to wind up. Thank you so much, Venerable. Um, on behalf of everyone of the my Trupa community and everyone on here which after i'm done with this announcement you're more than welcome to unmute yourself to thank venerable um, but just thank you for leading us through this incredible practice and also giving us teachings that on my end just help to clarify inspire uh, and really delight so just thank you so much uh, i had some people ask where can we find future events with venerable and I'm about to post a link. Uh, this is this will take you to our community programs event page, which at the moment, if you go to, you'll only see this retreat listed in our future commencement. There will be upcoming events with Venerable. They're just not quite yet posted. And when they are announced, they will be here. So if you want to tab uh, this link, and if you're on our emailing list, you will be getting a heads up of when those are coming. So. Um, really wonderful that she's here, that we have her as part of our community. Um, again, thank you. And with that, I will let everyone, please, if you'd like to unmute yourself. And thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Alex. And um, we're going to try and do Tara the last Sunday of every month. So watch this space. Yay! <laughs> thank you, Bedroom. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So you. Thank you. Thank you. Very it was lovely. Thank, thank, thank you, Venerable. Thank you, Venerable. Thank you, Venerable.